Hello and welcome back to another short research methods video. Today we're going to be looking at content analysis. We're going to go through what content analysis is, we'll have a look at a couple of examples, some evaluation points, and then we will finish off with some exam questions so that you can see what that would look like in an actual exam. Content analysis is a type of observational research in which people are studied indirectly via their communications. So the types of communications that may be subjected to a content analysis are quite varied and you know there's a lot of things that could be included in that. For example, spoken communication or spoken interactions such as conversations or a presentation or a speech. We might also look at written forms of communication such as texts, emails or journals, daily diaries, that type of stuff. Or it might even include broader examples from the media, such as books, magazines, TV programs, films, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all of that kind of stuff. The aim is to summarise and describe the communications that you're looking at in a systematic way so that it's possible to draw overall conclusions from the data. And just so that you can imagine the type of thing that I mean. So in psychology, you might conduct a content analysis to have a look how mental health is depicted in the newspaper, let's say. Or you might ask people to keep a daily diary. So in attachment research, let's say, you might ask a parent to keep a daily diary of the first couple of years of their child's life so that you can maybe have a look at some specific behaviours that you're interested in. Maybe you're interested in the weeks before your child goes to nursery and the weeks after the child goes to nursery to see if behaviour changes or something along those lines. In forensic psychology, you may be interested in conducting unstructured interviews with offenders, let's say, because you might be interested in finding out about their childhood or how they got to where they are now. And that's something that you would do in an unstructured interview just through conversation and then you could analyse all of that stuff later on. And in social and political psychology, you might want to have a look at political speeches and have a look at the content of the political speeches and the type of stuff that is being spoken about in order to then draw conclusions from that. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways in which you can use content analysis and there's a lot of different things that it can be used for. So the initial stage of content analysis is called coding. Now, some data sets to be analysed may be very, very large, such as transcripts from interviews with offenders, let's say, if we're going to use the example from before. And so there's going to be a need to categorise this information into meaningful units. So that might involve simply counting up the number of times a particular word or phrase actually appears in the text, which then helps us to produce a form of quantitative data. So, for example, if you are looking at how mental health is depicted in the newspaper, you might count up the amount of times a derogatory word is used for somebody with mental health problems. Or you might count up the amount of times the NHS gets mentioned together with mental health or waiting times or, you know, anything like that. Or if you're analysing TV, you might look at how men and women are depicted in professional roles or in roles at home, which is something that a study by Furnham and Farringer looked at in 2000. Okay, so the initial stage is always coding. We're turning our descriptive qualitative data into quantitative data. Then you've got something called thematic analysis. So thematic analysis is a type of content analysis, but this time the outcome is qualitative. Okay, so the main process involves the identification of themes. And a theme in content analysis refers to an idea, an explicit idea or an implicit idea, but one that is recurrent. Okay, so it keeps cropping up as part of the communication. It keeps coming back all the time, whether it's explicitly mentioned or whether it's just being hinted at, it is coming back over and over and over again. It's likely to be more descriptive than coding units like we mentioned in the slide before. So, for example, people with mental health problems might be represented in newspapers as a drain on the resources of the NHS, for example. But then... 
these themes can be developed into broader categories, such as things like stereotyping, or treatment, or control, or something along those lines. And then, when the researcher is satisfied that the themes that they've developed cover most of the aspects of the data they're analysing, they can then collect a new set of data to test the validity of the themes and the categories. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the evaluation points for it. So first off, we have strengths of content analysis. Now, one of the great things about content analysis is that we don't usually have to worry about ethical issues. And that is simply because the majority of the information that we're using is actually already in the public domain. Okay, so things like transcripts and newspapers and TV and all of that kind of stuff, we have access to it. We don't need to necessarily ask permission for it. So permission isn't really an issue. It also has very high external validity because it's all occurring in the real world. So it's very, very realistic in nature, which is great. And then finally, it is also very, very flexible because we can do it in two different ways. We can create quantitative data, we can create qualitative data, and that helps us to cover a wide spectrum of data gathering and also data analysis. However, a limitation of content analysis is that people are studied indirectly. That means that the communications are actually analysed outside of the context in which they occurred, which means that they are subjected to the biases of the researcher. So, for example, the researcher may attribute opinions and motivations where they were never initially intended. That means that content analysis could lack objectivity. However, it must also be said that most modern researchers are generally aware of their biases and tend to incorporate those biases in their findings. However, still, it could have an impact on the objectivity of the findings because of the researcher bias. Okay, so just to finish off then, let's have a quick look at how this could come up in an exam. So you've got two exam questions there on the left. Um, the top ones are fairly straightforward. You've got what is content analysis. You've got the mark scheme on the right-hand side there. Um, what is content analysis for two marks? Nice and simple. Um, part B is much more common in an exam these days. So explain how the psychologist might have carried out a content analysis to analyze the film clips of driver behavior. So generally, you'll be given some kind of research that is being conducted, and then you'll get asked how a content analysis could have been carried out. Okay, so that's for four marks. So if you see the mark scheme on the right-hand side, it goes through the type of stuff that you could have written. So the psychologist could have started by watching some of the film clips. They should identify potential categories that have emerged within the data. The categories could include, and you give a couple of examples of what that could have been, and then you count up the number of examples which fell into each category to provide quantitative data, for example. Okay, so in that example, they don't go any further than coding, and that's absolutely fine. However, for the second one, ignore part A of that question because that's not relevant to us. In part B, they ask specifically about thematic analysis. So in that one, you're asked to describe how the psychologist could continue the investigation by carrying out a thematic analysis of the interview recordings. Again, you've been given a study of some kind and you need to try and apply a thematic analysis to that investigation. So in this case, you write something like, use the recordings to make a transcript of the interviews, code initially, but then review the transcriptions or the codes and look for themes that might be linked to violent crime in this case, or family violence, or parental arguments, or alcohol misuse, or something along those lines. Given an example is always nice because it shows an examiner that you know what you're talking about, so try and get an example in where you can. Okay? The important thing to remember, however, is if you're using a thematic analysis, then you start with the coding and then you move on to descriptive themes in order to get your qualitative data. However, you don't have to do that unless you are specifically asked to do so like you are in this question. Okay, so I hope that's all made sense. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, then please feel free to pop them in the comment section below. Thank you.